This is case number D-1654581E, Robert Clayton Seaton v. Sandra Elizabeth Seaton. Seven. 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 Counsel, would all of you please state your appearances for the record? Certainly. Randy Richards, bar number 6794 of Kelleher & Kelleher. Uh, for the plaintiff, uh, Mr. Seddon, who's present, and also from my office. Ryan Davis, bar number 14184. 14184. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Jason Amy, bar number 9441, on behalf of Sandy Seddon. Uh, also present with me is John Ayler. Go ahead. On behalf of non-party, Southern City Anthem Community Association, bar number 13448. Right. Amy, would you see it? Yes, please be seated. All right, this is plaintiff's motion to compel for attorney's fees and costs, as well as plaintiff's motion to compel production of medical release form and attorney's fees and costs. Which does the, do the parties ask that I begin with? Is there any particular order? Uh, no particular order, Your Honor. Uh, we filed uh, the motion, I think, first on the, uh, uh, the documents from the HOA, and then we filed the motion for the release on that. So we'll leave it to you. If, which one you'd rather too, but... Um, All right, let's start with the first one first. Let's do the HOA, and uh, that's your motion. Would you yes. like to anything? I've read the pleadings. Well, I do want to point out, Your Honor, that we understand that the HOA is a very large uh, organization, and we've made it clear to the other side that we're looking for some specific documents. We don't expect thousands of pages of documents here. We're here for a very specific purpose, and that is relative to uh, the defendant's role as the manager of the HOA and whether or not uh, she's in the process, if there's a petition to have her removed as the general manager of the HOA. So we're looking- Stop you for just a second so that I understand one point. The entity that was subpoenaed in this case, um, is that the entity who employs um, the, adverse, the, the mother, Sandra Sutton? Well, she's the general manager of the, of the HOA. The now. HOA, so. So, yes, as far as we know, that's okay. the, the one that would most likely have the information. Okay. I, I didn't mean. Yes, ahead. no, sorry. sorry. I don't I mean to. I just wanted to make sure I, I right. have an understanding of that. And so, it, so with that, we're looking, it's our understanding, and this has all just come to us recently, Your Honor, and given the fact that we have a trial scheduled in two weeks, that was part of the urgency of this. So we do want to thank the court that's for. September 13th with a motion to continue pending. There's a motion to continue pending, correct. So we thank the court for granting the order shortening time today. And uh, so we are trying to help the cause here by indicating that we are looking for things that are a little more narrow here than maybe the objections that were originally lodged uh, by Mr. Ayler and, and by the defendant. Uh, what we're looking for is any and all documents related to this petition to have her removed uh, or if there's any action going on that uh, may involve her removal as the manager of the HOA. So that's what we're looking for here. And so we've indicated we, we're willing to narrow this subpoena. We've indicated we're willing to sign any confidentiality agreements if that's a concern for them. But uh, those documents probably wouldn't contain a lot of information relative to the HOA uh, landowners themselves. So with that, what we're looking for is you know, we need that information. It's certainly very germane because in the custody relocation case, that's going to be very relevant when we analyze what her circumstances are and uh, whether she's going to be possibly losing her job in the next few months. And so that's going to be an important consideration in determining uh, not only custody but the relocation analysis as well. So we believe that's a very straightforward request here, Your Honor. And Mr. Kelleher, who had, you know, had a trial that was carried over from a previous day, otherwise he would be here. He was the one that was primarily uh, communicating with counsel on this, but I can represent to you that you know, there were efforts made to try to get this resolved informally. In fact, we did receive letters from counsel addressing this. And so efforts have been made to get this resolved, but we believe this is relevant. We believe it's germane. We believe we're not being unreasonable in our demands. It certainly has uh, some type of bearing on her circumstances and her job uh, is always relevant, I think, in a custody determination. So, so with that, we would leave it to the court on that because we believe we're entitled to that information. In regards to the release, we're, the medical release, if you want me to go into that now while I'm talking. How, how would the parties prefer? Would you like to resolve the first issue first? Let, let's resolve the first part? since we've got two votes. <clears throat> I think that makes more sense. Okay, because, all right. And if I'm, I, I'd like to address the court just briefly before Mr. Ayler does on the issue. 
Uh, first and foremost, I think I can honestly represent to the court as uh, an officer of the court that my client's job is not in any way in jeopardy. I believe he'll, to my knowledge, and that is confirming with her employer. Okay, and I, I think he will confirm the same when he makes a record. The equivalent of what is at stake, this petition, is, uh, let's imagine hypothetically, I'm the associate of a law firm, and I represented a client, and the client was unsatisfied with my representation, so then proceeds to go online and write a negative review of me. Now they're trying to say, that negative review means you're going to get terminated from the law firm. That's what this is. It's not a formal petition to have her removed, and I think he'll confirm the same when he gets up there. I just want to make that analogy so your, your, your Honor can frame what we're talking about here. Please go ahead. Your Honor, before we get into the substance, Your Honor, uh, I know you, you've read the pleadings and I'm assuming you looked at all the attachments. I just kind of wanted, if we could go through the timeline of the subpoena, the responses, and then all of a sudden uh, a motion to compel. You may. So July 24th, the subpoena was served on the association's former agent, registered agent, uh, responded anyway. On August 11th, uh, our letter noted several objections because uh, the original or the subpoena requested any and all interactions, communications that uh, the defendant has had with unit owners in the community, among other things, petitions for board of directors removal, and this petition for vote of no confidence. Several objections made therein. Uh, we do not hear from counsel for the plaintiff until we receive a voicemail on August 17th. We return that call on Monday, August 21st. Uh, we are informed by plaintiff's counsel's office that plaintiff's counsel was in trial. Uh, that same day... You returned the call when? That Monday, August 21st. So we got a voicemail on August 17th, which was a Thursday. On Monday, August 21st, we returned the call <clears throat> excuse me, and we're informed that uh, Mr. Keller was in trial. That same day at 11.39 a.m., the motion to compel was filed. On August 22nd, the next day, Tuesday, we took a message that he called. That same day, we returned the call. We were informed that Mr. Keller was with the client. That's when the uh, ex parte motion for order shortening time was filed at 11.10 a.m. August 23rd, we receive a fax from Mr. Keller advising that his motion was filed and now only requesting certain information related to the petition for vote of no confidence. Uh, I believe also in this same petition, or excuse me, in this fax, excuse me, Mr. Keller notes, in fairness, I realize you returned my call yesterday and we have played phone tag. However, in the motion to compel filed on August 21st, Monday, in his affidavit, I don't want to misquote here. I've read it. Okay, that no calls were ever returned. Um, so then on August 24th, uh, we write another letter to Mr. Keheller informing him of his failure to comply with EDCR 2.34 and further explain the petition of no confidence is not something that exists under the law, under the association's governing documents. It is of no consequence. It is nothing that the association has to recognize. These homeowners have no authority over removing her from her position of employment. Did you have a copy of it? A copy of? The petition? The petition? Yes, we did. Uh, no consequences to her employment. The board of directors would make that decision. This is not an issue that they've wished to address, so we're not recognizing it. We don't want to recognize its validity. Before getting into a substantive thing, I just want to continue with the timeline. Uh, August 24th, so that same day, we received another call, sent an email uh, stating that there was, we noticed we subsequently, after we sent the letter, we were served with the motion to compel, saw that, that stated that we did never return to any calls. Uh, and then sent an email informing Mr. Keller that it was factual inaccuracies in his affidavit and that we requested that the motion be withdrawn immediately. Uh, August 25th, uh, Mr. Keller responded in an email, uh, said that it appeared that we weren't going to speak with him unless he uh, withdrew the motion, uh, requested that we called him. We had already told him in the August 24th letter that we weren't going to be available the rest of the day or Friday and to please cease uh, my task administrator of office who sets up teleconferences which also explained is how we prepare a uh, meeting so we can make sure we're available with CC'd and he could email her to set up a teleconference. Uh, at that point, it appeared that we weren't going anywhere and we weren't going to respond substantively anyway, so the motion to compel or to shortening time was already filed. Um, moving into the substance beyond those 
the timeline, which is it's hard to understand the reasonableness of it, is the fact that again we explain this petition is is nothing. However, this petition, in your opinion, in my opinion, this petition contains the names and unit owner addresses and contact information for several unit owners. We have an obligation to protect the confidentiality of something that they do not believe is going to be disclosed to people outside of the association, especially without notice. Uh, additionally, we have employment concerns as to what we're doing to protect anything related to the association's employee, Ms. Seddon, and obviously we didn't have enough time to really dig into that and file a substantive opposition. Uh, we figured we'd hear today just on the timeline here, and you know, if, if further arguments necessary, I'll be glad to address them. Counsel? Just briefly in rebuttal on this, Your Honor, when they make when they say that it's of no consequence, that she's not in danger of losing her job, it doesn't really matter when we're doing discovery. The job is to produce the information, and then we'll make the determination at that time whether if that's the case or not. But we have to prepare for trial, and we have to go into court with documents. So we need to have that to confirm that. And if it's, that's the case, then we have a decision to make at that time whether or not we would use it at trial or back off of that issue or whatever the case. But for them to just make the representation and be a screen to the information, that's not what discovery is for. We have an obligation to our client to do our due diligence on it. And they said in their letters, and they sent previous letters, there was certainly, there's no dispute that there was communication between both counsel to try to get this resolved before the motion was filed. We just filed our motion on August 22nd, and they've acknowledged that they sent letters on August 11th, and efforts were made to try to communicate. And under EDCR, the rule says good faith efforts to resolve. So we made an effort. It wasn't like we just ran out and filed a motion without sending any letters over to the other side or any phone calls. We fulfilled our 2.34 obligations because we made a good faith effort to reach out to them. And it was clear from their correspondence that you know, they, they kept making everything contingent on us withdrawing their, our motion. Even after we filed the motion, they said, well, you know, we'll have a 2.34 conference if you withdraw your motion. Well, you know, we shouldn't have to do that, especially when we have a trial pending in a couple weeks. And so it was evident that they just weren't going to provide this information. And so we had to do what we had to do in this situation. And as I indicated earlier, and I'll just reiterate it because I think it's important here, we're willing to sign a confidentiality agreement here, and we're willing to narrow the scope of this subpoena down to the information we need relative to these petitions and votes and correspondence relative to her being removed as the manager. So we've already agreed to that, but they still don't want to give us anything. It'd be one thing if they made objections, Your Honor, and then said, without waiving our objections, we'll give you these documents. But they haven't given us a single page of paper, nothing. And so we would have had to be here anyway. And so with that, we leave it to you, Your Honor, but we believe that you know they've been unreasonable in their position. We're asking for some fees for having to file the motion and come all the way down here for what should have been a straightforward uh, response from them. All right. Um, in reviewing the subpoena, I think it is overbroad. However, I don't think that I don't think that that is, um, and I think that it can be tailored more clearly. With that said, it is not the um, person or the entity to, that has been subpoenaed's um, prerogative to determine what is relevant or not relevant to a proceeding. Whether or not it's relevant to you doesn't mean it's not relevant to this proceeding. So what I am going to order is that the subpoena be tailored to seek only those documents from the Homeowners Association that deal with Ms. Seddon's employment, which would include her employment file, if they are her employing the entity that employs her. In addition, any petitions or complaints that the Homeowners Association has received with regard to her um, performing in her employment capacity. No other communications need be divulged, but if, they, if the communications address her um, performance in, a, in an employment capacity. Now I understand that that may involve the names of other individuals, and so there's a little thing called redaction. And, you, and the, uh, you can redact the names and addresses of the parties that you believe 
uh, need to be redacted with a, a log to the other side as to why the documents have been redacted and what has been redacted. Then if uh, those documents may not be something that you will rely on in, as, as regarding her employment, but certainly then the, if the document is provided to the other side, they can in a deposition, should they so choose, ask whether it will affect uh, her employment or not. And so that will be my order with regard to the subpoena. And Your Honor, just in that response, could, because of the, uh, in case the trial does not get continued, I just ask the court if we could have a very short window. We'll, yeah, yeah. First so of all, I, I want to be clear, do you want us to? September 6th. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. And I'd ask that you prepare the report and recommendations on, um, on this motion, on the reports and recommendations of, of that ruling, and it needs to be, um, it's one week from today, is that September 6th? going to ask that it be submitted by, uh, there'll be a status check return in one week uh, for the report and recommendation on September 6th. If I receive it by 3 o'clock on September 5th, that status check will be vacated. What time on the 6th, excuse me? Um, let's say 3 or 4. Three o'clock on the sixth. Okay. On the fifth, but what time is the status check on the sixth? I oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Two o'clock. The status check calendar is at two o'clock. On the sixth. On the sixth. If I receive the report and by the fifth, then it'll be vacated. Three, right. I will vacate the status check. And then our request for fees, Your Honor, is denied. I think that further attempts to I understand that you did make a phone call. Um, there needs to be a meet and confer, and a letter should have been sent indicating times available for the meet and confer. If they chose to disregard that, that's on them, but I, I'm not going to award uh, attorney's fees and costs on that matter. Your Honor, if I may just to clarify, so there's an example of the petition. I, I believe this is similar, if not the same, of what would be included as to the actual petition. May I see it? Yes. Please approach. So in the pages before it, I believe, are, if not the version that we have, I believe what they pulled from the website. You can redact the names and addresses. You, I don't see that the date would have any problem. Okay. And the number of individuals who've signed it. Okay. I don't think there's any reason that uh, a petitioner or uh, the plaintiff would need that. Um, the, the names of the individuals who signed it, but any any indication of what the petition is for and what they're asking right. the Homeowners Association to do can be included. The names can be redacted. You can identify the number of people. And just so there's no dispute, uh, just so uh, within the scope of what you're ordering, Your Honor, I want to make sure we're clear. Uh, that would also include uh, perhaps as an extension of what you're saying, uh, if the HOA itself were, took further action, let's say the board or the committee or whoever. There's any notes, minutes, Notes, actions, minutes, thank you. Any notifications, any reprimands, any yes. other documents within her personnel file or that are contained in any other minutes of the Homeowners Association, those would fall within the scope of the subpoena as I've limited it. Thank you, Your Honor. And Your Honor, I'm sorry, I just want to make sure that we're clear on everything here. And that is just the petition or we are, are we speaking about her entire employee file with anything that any unit owner has written to her stating, I don't think you're doing your job, or, hey, board, you should fire the manager. I mean, how, how broad is this going? Because that could take uh, significant time to dig through what may there be there, what may not be there. Are there that many complaints against her to go it, through? It's not about that. It's it's the time. To, she's been the manager at the association for over a year. So to dig through and see what could be in this file. So this is a community of over 7,000 people. I, I understand that. I'm talking about her employment file. And so okay. if they've been submitted to her employment file, okay. they need to be included. If okay. there's been any hearings regarding her conduct, okay. the minutes of those hearings, any complaints or, he or, or um, other things regarding her conduct need to be Understood. submitted. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I believe that resolves that uh, motion, and so we'll move on to the uh, motion on the release. Uh, this is a little, um, uh, as we indicated in our motion, um, this goes back to uh, the fact that uh, the defendant has had a history of, of drinking problems, and there is a toxicology report out there 
that I think will uh, shed some relevant and important information on the extent of her drinking and the problem that she has. This seemed like a very straightforward issue here, uh, very simple in its nature. She's, there's a history in this case, as we noted in our motion, of defendant being uh, violating court orders for having been drinking when she was not supposed to. She knew she was going to be tested, and yet she failed these toxicology tests anyway. There was an outsourced child custody evaluation was done, but the, out, the evaluator was not, the report itself doesn't have all the information. It was a summary. Um, the evaluator herself, I believe, indicated in the report she wasn't able to get to the bottom of some of this. So this is relevant just to determine uh, what is going, if she has a drinking problem, whether it affects her ability to work. Uh, and here, we were very clear, we sent several letters to opposing counsel in an effort to meet and confer on this, in an effort to resolve this matter pursuant to 2.34. We even sent a release over in July, which, you know, is pretty standard. Let, but let, let me cut you off for a second, and I'm going to kind of tell you where I'm going with this, and then I'm going to give you a chance to respond. I can only compel formal discovery that's been requested. And I understand that you did send the release over, and quite frankly, in my opinion, it's gamesmanship not to respond. However, since you didn't formally comply with the rule of a uh, request for production of documents, that will need to be sent with the attached release. And I'm going to shorten the time, and I'm going to give you, this is my preliminary rule, I'm going to give you a chance to address it. My preliminary ruling will be that she will have five business days to sign it and return it to you. So the order on the request for production of documents, once you provide that, will um, require her to respond within five business days. Um, and with that stated, I'm going to allow counsel to that's my preliminary ruling. I'm now going to let you address me further, should you so. You well, I just would note for the record, Your Honor, I, th I think part of the thing is we were getting down, obviously, to propound a formal discovery request as close to trial. Normally, they'd have 30 days and that type of thing. So we tried to do it through 5.501 and 2.34 means. And so uh, I just want to get that on the record, that otherwise that would have obviously been the route we would have tried to go. And I would add, just for the record, because we sent it, on July 18th, if they had provided it, you know, we might have been able to get this resolved much sooner. Okay. Uh, I first want to address your comment of gamesmanship. It, this wasn't a matter of gamesmanship. If Your Honor asks anybody on the third floor as to how I conduct myself in my cases, they would all unequivocally I can, I, think, I can only go with confirm. what I've read in this I understand. Case. So here's, here's why we didn't respond. Because in this case has been so grotesquely over litigated, it is absolutely absurd. I've never come across anything of the sort. Practically every day there is a letter, a pleading, something submitted from the other side to our office. If we had to address every single thing, my client would be literally bankrupt right now. It is not possible. This is the kind of stuff we deal with. We get settlement proposal letters that say, I get everything I want, you get nothing you want, let's settle the case. It's that kind of thing. And so finally, I made it very clear that I'm only going to respond to the, co the correspondence that are necessary. And I, I get it. You might think, well, this could have been one of those instances, Mr. Namey, and, and frankly, that could be the case. However, because it is constant, we had to pick and choose. And in this instance, he had his rights. He, uh, now let me frame it around other things. He's continued her depot, not once, not twice. I think it's three or four times now. And so you've had ample opportunity. This case started in January. That's the first point. The second point is it has been very clear what the custody evaluation report includes and what the court's orders are as to that report. So it's not for my client to execute a HIPAA release to have them access the record. It is part of her record. She even makes it clear that it is not to be released. She is giving it to the court. It is the court's report. 
And so it's not even in my client's discretion to do so. So that's why we have a medical release to correct. a lab who took her blood? Yes, because the lab report is part of the custody evaluation report, which is part of the court's report. And this was made very clear in the court's orders. It's, it's in Stephanie Holland's uh, description of her uh, enga engagement by the court. And so here's the deal. They're going to get it at trial when the court gets the report. And so they know this. And because they know this, that's why I didn't respond to the letter. To me, this is just pushing a file, billing the file, let's charge our client what we can, outcome be damned. And so, I, 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 yes, I'm, I take somewhat of an offense to the, the remark, but I understand that you only know what's in the pleadings. I, I would tell you, look, if that's your order, my client will comply, but then we're going to have an issue with uh, the court above, I suppose, and we'll have to address that up there. Um, that said, because they're aware of the situation, I think this is a case absolutely where my client should be awarded fees for having to even present herself here today just to explain it, because they knew better. They knew better that they could have filed their formal discovery request. They knew better that they didn't even need to file a formal discovery request because it's part of the court record. And yet, they continue to do this every day. Another motion filed today, by the way. And so now we've got more motions to address and, and, and whatnot. So at some point, my client's going to have to get awarded fees for having to constantly address the absurd. Just briefly in response, Your Honor, just a couple of things. Um, first of all, um, I don't know if it's relevant to this court whether this case has been over litigated or not. I would submit it hasn't. The case is only eight months old and the trial was set for September. So, uh, y you know, there was a custody evaluation among other things, and so this case is moving along and is on track to be done. So, you know, and you can see, if there's any allegations of over litigation, you can see why when sim simple requests for releases aren't being honored and we have to come in and get the judge's help on that. Uh, the other concern is, it, each party has the right to see documents ahead of time before they come to trial. We shouldn't have to wait until we get to trial to look at things and be able to analyze them on the spot in trial. Uh, we have the right to see it ahead of time as part of our preparation for trial and, uh, and then also to in anticipation of objections to it or something like that. If we just take it as part of Dr. Holland's report, then you know, there's grounds for objections uh, for evidentiary purposes. We would want that document in and of itself to stand on its own if we need it to in case, for whatever reason, Dr. Holland's report is not acknowledged. So uh, with that, Your Honor, we would uh, we believe there's basis then to move forward uh, with this motion and, for, and to get fees, again, for having to do it. So It's Dr. Holland's report ordered by the court. It's going to be acknowledged, right? There is no formal discovery request, despite everything they've said. They've not been able to say, we asked for it formally. They told us no. 2.34 2 doesn't apply. This motion to compel doesn't apply. They know, the, they know what the court's orders are. If anyone needs to be awarded fees, it should be our side. Okay. My order in this case is that the motion to compel the release as requested through correspondence is denied. With that said, I will sign an order shortening time on a request for production to allow you to obtain the release through the proper formal discovery on a request for production for the plaintiff to, or I'm sorry, for the defendant to respond within five days. Five business days. Five judicial days. Five, five judicial days. Five judicial days. Thank you, Your Honor. I agree that 5.602, which is the family court's equivalent of EDCR 2.34, was not met in this case. I am going to admonish counsel that in my courtroom with regard to discovery, I expect there to be better communication before motions are filed and or opposed. If you received a request for um, a production of something that you felt was inappropriate, 
I think it is, in my opinion, is legal gamesmanship to not respond. I think it's similarly inappropriate to file a motion to compel without the substantive nature of 5.602 being complied with. The motion is denied. No attorney's fees will be awarded either party on this because I think that there is, um, both sides have responsibility for the fact that we are here today. And um, I've already told you that I will sign an order shortening time on, um, unless counsel, I'll sign the order shortening time unless counsel will agree to provide it within the time required. I can't guarantee that. I don't have control over the toxicology okay, place. Uh, no, 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 no. Your client's signing of the release. That your client signed a release within five business days, not then produce the documents within five business days. Uh, well. Five judicial days, sorry. Five judicial days. When would that be? We've got a trial on October, uh, excuse me, we have a trial on September 13th. So. Well, we would have it over to them today, Your Honor. I, 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 I guess we'll just do that. I mean, if the trial's not, con got not continued, it's unlikely you're going to obtain the records from the lab in time anyway, but the party needs to comply. And then on the re would you like a report and recommendation on that? Yes, right? please prepare it on the same time frame. Um, I'd like to have it um, by September 5th at 3. We'll have a status check on September 6th at 2 o'clock regarding the report and recommendation. Very good. Since right. we're de dealing with such tight time frames, I'm doing it. Normally I would give you longer to prepare the report and recommendations, but we're dealing with tight time frames. And so um, that's the order in this case. Thank you very Bye -bye. much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.